My name is Ken Walzer. I'm professor of history and a former director of Jewish studies at Michigan State University. Uh, recently retired after 43 years of teaching and scholarship in James Madison College. Uh, I came here in 1971. I was hired on a one year. I didn't expect to be here for 43 years, but we came uh, for a one year appointment and we liked it and they liked me, so uh, we stayed. I am a historian. Uh, I take my disciplinary uh, studies uh, uh, seriously, but I've always taught with the perspective that I wasn't training historians. I was helping people who were gonna go on in public affairs in some way. I wanted to ha them to have a historical perspective. There's a past behind the present um, and that to understand it, um, they have to go there and they have to read about it and they have to interact with it. Um, and th that's been in all my Madison courses and it's been a special role and I've, I've loved playing that role. It's easier and even more necessary to be an excellent teacher when you're surrounded by excellent teachers. My own style uh, was shaped by the fact that I was a jazz musician before, before I became an academic and a pianist in a jazz band. Pianist uh, uh, fills space, pushes the band forward uh, a lot, especially if the pianist is a leader, allots the, the, uh, the roles to the various people who are playing as part of the ensemble. And that's always been the way in which I conceive the classroom bit. Uh, I am the, the person who sets the agenda, we play within a structure, but in between, like a pianist, I fed the class with questions. Um, and we explored these questions wherever they, that exploration took us. To be invited to go with 15 scholars from all over the world to open up the Red Cross International Tracing Service was a remarkable honor. They asked me, I think, because they knew of my work on Buchenwald and they knew that Buchenwald's records were pretty much preserved at the ITS. But they wanted to get scholars working in the area able to testify openly that this was a treasure trove. This was uh, going to uh, increase our knowledge in new ways about uh, parts of the Holocaust. And they were preparing us to answer questions from the international press on what is the value of these records. As an aside, the AP representative at the international press uh, conference said to me, hey, did you find anything really new and I, just as an answer to the question on the spur of the moment, I said, oh yeah, I found the, the name of the guy who protected Israel Mir Lau, who was the Ashkenazi chief rabbi of Israel um, in the camps. He was an eight-year-old, little Lulek. There was a Russian young boy from Rostov, Rostov on the Don. I knew only one name, Fyodor. He sacrificed his life to protect me and to save me. I don't know why. 63 years after the war, a professor Kent Walsh from Michigan University. So he made the press conference and said, I found the man, a man from Rostov on the Don, Fyodor Mikhailchenko, who saved the life of Chief Rabbi. I was looking all my life what happened to Ros to Fyodor, I want to thank you. They went looking for him and it was too late. He was deceased. He had died uh, at the turn of the century. Um, but before he had died, he had gone back to Buchenwald and made a tape where he talked about protecting a little eight-year-old boy by the name of Lula. So they, they nailed it, they found him, and they brought his two daughters to, to Israel they made him a righteous among the nations at uh, Yad Vashem. And the daughters went to dinner with Israel Merlau, who's an Orthodox uh, rabbi, which means he has many children, and his children have many children, none of whom would exist, uh, save for the role of this 18-year-old boy in the camp. I've had another success in, in that regard. We made a movie called Kinderblock 66, uh, based on my work about the rescue of children and youths in Buchenwald. Block 66 was the big barrack 
where a lot of people were hidden um, and they were protected until the end of the camp. We made a movie about it and we focused particularly on the head uh, of the bloc, uh, a uh, Czech communist by the name of Antonin Kalina. As part of the movie and also as part of the showing of the movie at film festivals since then, uh, we made an effort to get Antonin Kalina uh, nominated and uh, approved as a Righteous Among the Nations. And when the film showed at the Jerusalem Film Festival, the head of uh, the Righteous Department, Yad Vashem, appeared and said he was just uh, approved as Righteous Among the Nations. Another memorable uh, set of events is building Jewish studies in the last uh, 15, 20 years, uh, working with my colleague Steve Weiland from Education. We got a lot of support from the university to help build the Jewish studies program. It had to be envisioned, and it had to be recruited for, and it had to be built. And as a consequence, where once there was no Hebrew instruction in the university, now there is. It's where once there was no study abroad in Israel, and now there is, supported by pretty uh, hefty student scholarships. Where once there was uh, no calendar devoted to uh, Jewish themes and issues, uh, now there is. There's an annual Israeli film festival. There's an annual Holocaust lecture. There's an annual Jewish art and music lecture. Um, there's an annual Yiddish lecture on Yiddish culture. Those things, absent before, are now part of the everyday life of the uh, annual life of the university. Uh, probably the most important thing we did with our careers was build this place, build James Madison College. Build it, protect it, uh, transform it um, over time. So I remember uh, being the faculty spokesman for the faculty of James Madison College during the period when uh, the university was considering closing us down. Uh, we awoke one Monday morning to see our name on the hit list uh, for the state news. Uh, we were one of the colleges to be eliminated and some of the faculty would be shifted over to international relations and political science, but the rest of us would be fired. So we fought back um, with a lot of help from our alumni and uh, we turned it around and, and we were able to uh, survive and then thrive because four years later the university was calling us the, the jewel in the crown of Michigan State University. I, I've been thrilled by the students I've had here. Um, this has been a great place, absolutely great place to be a teacher scholar. We understood that the most important thing that we produced um, was the students who were graduating from James Madison College. We were helping students find themselves um, as thinking, acting human beings. Nothing I write, no matter how important, um, or uh, no movie I participate in making, is as important as the collective production um, by myself and other colleagues together of this large number of students in the world of public affairs, trying to do good things. Um, and knowing what they're doing, um, hearing their successes, uh, seeing pictures of their families, man, that's, that's the best. It, it's, it's been a special place to spend a career. And I'm looking forward to um, doing some writing and uh, hoping to maintain my contact with all my former students who keep up their contacts with me. It's been a privilege. <laughs>